Okay, I hope I'm audible to all my students who are attending this particular lecture for econometrics. In this particular lecture, I'm going to start with a very important module in the econometrics course. This is time series econometrics. The book I prefer to follow for my lectures on time series econometrics. This is Essentials of Econometrics by Gujarati and Porter. Now all my students can recall that whatever modules we have done, before the module we are starting today, all these were cross-sectional data. It means that we were looking at all the variables, be it the independent variables or the dependent variables at a particular point of time. From this lecture onwards, we are going to now look at independent and dependent variables over a period of time. So now we have a time dimension. We are going to see how the dependent variables change over a period of time. Okay. So it's a very interesting and a very important topic. Okay. So let's quickly start with the first lecture of time series econometrics in this particular lecture. I am just writing the main heading for completeness. We are looking at time series econometrics, time series econometrics, some basic concepts, time series econometrics, some basic concepts. Okay. And the book I prefer to follow for my lectures on this particular module. This is chapter 21 of the book Gujarati and Porter. Essentials of Econometrics by Gujarati and Porter. Okay, so unlike the cross-sectional analysis where we were measuring variables at a particular point of time, in time series econometrics, like I said, we are now going to look at variables over a period of time. So we define something called a stationary stochastic process. So all students can write the first heading for this particular module, stationary, stationary, stochastic process, stationary, stochastic process. So I can write that a stochastic process a stochastic process is said to be stationary. A stochastic process is said to be stationary if its mean and variance, if its mean and variance are constant over time. If its mean and variance are constant over time and the value of the covariance between the two time periods, between the two time periods depends only on depends only on the distance or I can say the lag between the two time periods between the two time periods and not the actual time and not the actual time at which the covariance is computed. Not the actual time at which the covariance is computed. So I am revising it. A stochastic process is said to be a stationary stochastic process if the mean and the variance of the variable are constant over time. That means the mean and the variance are not changing. They are constant over time. 
and the value of the covariance is only going to depend on the distance between the two time periods and not the time period when the covariance is computed. For example, if I find the covariance between the variables, if I find the covariance uh, at the time t, so basically the covariance is going to depend on the time gap or the distance between two time periods. The covariance will not be dependent on when the time, the time at the time at which the covariance is computed. I'm repeating it again. In case of a stationary stochastic process, covariance does not depend on the time at which it is computed. Covariance depends on the time gap or the distance or the lag between two time periods. So I can write that such a stochastic process, such a stochastic process is known as such a stochastic process is known as is known as weakly stationary is known as weakly stationary or covariance stationary there are several names for this. Weakly stationary or covariance stationary or second order stationary. That's another name. Second order stationary or wide sense stochastic process wide sense stochastic process. Okay, so that's so such a stochastic process where the mean and the variance are constant and the value of the covariance only depends on the time distance or the lag between two time periods. Such a process is called a weekly stationary time series process, also called the covariance stationary time series process or the second order stationary or the wide sense stochastic process. Okay, first of all, just quickly also revising, we have done this before also, what is a stochastic process, also called a random process. In case students are thinking, what's a stochastic process? It is just the collection of random variables which is ordered with respect to time. So I can erase the initial part and I can write this also so that students are not, not left with any confusion at all. So I can write a random process or a stochastic process, random process or a stochastic process is a collection, is a collection of random variables. It is a collection of random variables ordered in time. That means you're ordering them in time. Okay, so in our analysis, suppose I use y as a random variable, so I can write if y is a random variable, if y is a random variable, if y is a continuous, let me write this clearly. If y is let me write this clearly. If y is a continuous random variable, we denote it by we denote it by y as a function of t. If y is a continuous random variable, remember a variable is said to be a continuous random variable if it takes values in an interval. If it takes values in an interval, then it's a continuous random variable. Okay, so hoping students have understood this. 
and I can erase this particular part and write, I can write, if y is a discrete variable, erasing this part, I can write that if y is a discrete variable, if y is a discrete variable, we denote it by we denote it by y t okay so i'm quickly revising this slide again with all students point number one we have started about what is meant by a stochastic process and we have learned that a random process or a stochastic process is just a collection of random variables which is ordered in time. If my random variable is a continuous random variable, suppose y is my continuous random variable. Remember, a random variable is said to be a continuous random variable if it's measured in an interval on a real line. So it takes infinite values in an interval. So if y is a continuous random variable measured over time, we denote it by y as a function of t. If y is a discrete random variable, when I say that y is a discrete random variable, it takes it, it means that y takes exact and finite values, which you can count on fingers. So if y is a discrete random variable, we use y subscript p to denote it. And then we have also learned that a stochastic process, I am just revising that again. A stochastic process is said to be station is said to be stationary. Let me write this clearly. A stochastic process is said to be stationary if its mean and variance are constant over time. Okay? Mean and the variance of the stochastic process are constant and the covariance between the two time periods will only depend on the distance between the two time periods and not on the actual time at which the covariance is computed. Now the time has come to put, put all this in terms of mathematical terms. So if I erase all this off, I can write that yt is set to follow. yt is set to follow a stochastic time series. yt is set to follow a stochastic time series when the mean which is expected value of yt is equal to a constant mu variance of the random variable yt which is variance of yt is equal to by definition the formula for variance the definition of variance is expected value of yt minus its mean square which is equal to sigma square Remember from my statistical methods from econo for economics course, variance of yt by definition, using expectations, the variance of yt is expected value of yt minus mu square, which is sigma square. So you can see that the mean and the variance are constants. And the covariance, the covariance gamma k, is exactly equal to expected value of yt minus mu times yt plus k minus k. You can clearly see that the covariance, which is gamma k, depends on the time gap between two time periods. So what's the gap between yt and yt plus k? The gap between yt and yt plus k is k. So I can write where gamma k is the covariance gamma k is the covariance or the auto covariance at lag k that is the covariance that is the covariance between 
the values of yt and yt plus k that is i can say between between the two y values between the two y values k periods apart you can clearly see that the covariance is basically dependent on the gap between the two variables which are k periods apart yt and yt plus k are just k periods apart so i can write a so hoping students have understood this slide first of all i am repeating it again yt my random variable yt is set to follow a stochastic time series process if both my mean and variance are constant mean in is mu variance is denoted by sigma and the covariance purely depends on the time gap between um, yt plus k and yt which is k the covariance only depends on the time lag or the time gap between uh, the values taken by y at two different time periods now if i take k as 0 so if k is equal to 0 what will gamma 0 be it will just be expected value of put k as 0. So yt minus mu times, if I put this k as 0, I get yt minus mu. So I just get expected value of yt minus mu square, which is nothing but the variance sigma square. So I can clearly say that if k is equal to 0, gamma 0 is just simply equal to the variance, which is simply the variance. which is simply the variance. If I take k as 1, so let me erase the initial part now. If I take k as 1, putting k equal to 1, what is my gamma 1? Gamma 1 is equal to expected value of yt minus mu times yt plus 1 minus where I can write gamma 1 is the covariance between the two adjacent values of y. It is the covariance between the two adjacent values of y. Because they are just one time period apart. So they are adjacent to each other. Okay. So um, hoping all students have understood this. Okay. So students, this is where I stop in this particular lecture. Uh, the objective of this lecture was just to look at, uh, you know, introduce the time series uh, econometrics to all students. And what we have done in this lecture is we have talked about what is meant by a stationary stochastic process. Okay, so it was a short lecture. In the next lecture, I'm going to dig deeper. And uh, we are going to continue with the discussion of, we are going to continue with the discussion of the stationary stochastic process in the next lecture. Okay, so I stop in this particular lecture. I hope students have enjoyed this lecture. Any doubts, you can unmute your mic and ask or you can get in touch with me for doubts on call or WhatsApp or you can mail me your doubts at divineschooloveconomics at the rate gmail.com. This is where I stop in this lecture.